In this video, I'll show you the first steps with DigiPara Lift Designer. First, I'll show you the start screen, including licensing information. And then, we start a new elevator project. Let's get started! The first step is to launch DigiPara Lift Designer. The start screen opens automatically. On the left side, you have quick access to recent projects. Next to this, there are two buttons with a plus in the upper left corner. With these, you can create a new elevator or a new escalator. One square further, you can open existing projects. At News, you'll come to the latest DigiPara blog articles. At the bottom, you can update your DigiPara BIM libraries. If you click on Tutorials, you'll come to the Tutorials for DigiPara Lift Designer. At last, there is a grey square where you can get your licensing information. If you click on that one, you can see your current contract status and your computer data. Now let's learn how to create a new elevator project. Click here at the start screen, New Elevator. In the first step, you can enter a project name, project number, commission number and the name of who created this project. The added project data can later be referenced in title blocks and external drawing blocks. The project units indicate the units used in the drawing. Below, you can select which standard you would like to work with. Click on the arrow to get to the next step. Here you can select the numbers of floors and the typical floor-to-floor -floor distance. These values concern the entrances on all floors, but you can customize these later in the loaded project individually. You can also choose if the building floor levels should be shown or not. If not, remove the check mark. At step 3, you can specify the general elevator type, either traction or hydraulic. The weight can either be specified via the number of passengers or by a fixed payload. You can also set the minimum speed of the elevator. In the background, you can see that the software updates your decisions automatically. If you don't want this, you can remove the check mark here. With step 4, you have many options. In the first row, you can choose whether the drive should be in the shaft or in an extra machine room. Then, whether the drive should be at the top or bottom, and if it's in an extra machine room, whether it should be located on the left, front, rear or right. In the second line, you can select which car roping you need and whether or not you want to have only lateral guided cabin frames and only with counterweight safety gear. In the last row, you can decide which counterweight roping you want to have and where the counterweight should be located, left, rear or right. This depends on which sides you need entrances and if you have a lateral guided car frame or not. Here on the right side, you can see what you have selected and if you click on select another solution, you can select another solution, for example, with a different car width and depth. In the last step, you can select a default sheet template for your elevator. You can always delete or add those. The sheet template list can be supplemented with the, your own templates as well. For further insight, please have a look at the following training, A3. The creation process of your elevator project is done. The work area is a default sheet that appears always with a plan view. Thanks for watching. 